Okay, welcome to this demonstration of Shotput Pro. This is version 4.1.3, and this demo goes along with our episode 28 of the Tech Media Planet podcast, which you can find at www.techmediaplanet.com. So let's get started. What you have here is my desktop. I have two um, cards mounted on my desktop. One is an Arri Alexa card. The other is a Sony F3. And what I want to show you is basically how Shotput Pro can download pretty much any solid state um, camera you can record, or even spinning drives in the case of um, old red drives. So right here, let me go ahead and launch Shotput Pro. And what you see right off the bat is a brand new interface. If you're used to Shotput Pro version 1 or version 2, even version 3, this has been basically a complete redesign. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the two cards automatically appear here in the attached media. I can go here and refresh the drive list and click that. And what that'll do is basically look for any other cards, P2 cards, S by S cards, um, CF cards, SD cards in the case of Canon, or um, I'm sorry, in the case of AVCHD, it'll look for all that kind of stuff and automatically present it to me here for offloading. So uh, contrary to older versions of Shopit Pro, what I tend to do is right off the bat here, go to preferences. And you'll see there's a bunch of stuff that you got to look at uh, before you even start uh, doing anything else because it's really going to change how Shotput Pro performs on your current system. So right now the very first choice you have is manual or automatic. Obviously automatic is that full auto mode where you get to basically set it and walk away. You pop in a card, it starts downloading, it auto increments and spits out the card. For this demo I'm going to kind of go into manual mode so we can actually see um, everything that I'm doing. Plus, that also supposes that you have a DMT or a DIT, somebody actually running the system on set, and that it's not in full auto mode. Um, so I'm going to leave it on manual. You can ask it to begin offloading upon entering the queue, meaning that the minute it sees uh, the attached media in the queue, it starts offloading it. I, I tend to turn that off. I'd like to have control as to when stuff starts offloading. You can tell it to ignore hidden files and folders. Those are those dot um, DS stores, things like that. I leave that checked in. Maximum number of final simultaneous files. This is an interesting selection because essentially Shopit Pro wants to use as many cores as possible and offload more than one file at a time. And that's a great thing except if your system is limited uh, somehow in both horsepower and bandwidth to um, to, to its capabilities, then it'll cause a bottleneck is what I found. So right now, you can tell it basically go ahead and download 10 files at a time or just download one file at a time. And that really depends on the speed of your ports and your I.O. system. So for example, if you're just running like a USB 2 uh, destination drive, chances are you don't want to be bottlenecking that with multiple downloads simultaneously. It's just gonna, you know, crap it out. However, if you're running this on a Mac Pro and you've got a RAID going in there and you've got multiple I.O. systems running, um, I would then try and, you know, bust that up, go up to seven, maybe eight. Uh, and this is something you can kind of play around with. Do a couple of offloads, see what's best for your system and try and set that optimally. The next thing you get to choose is basically um, what kind of verification you want. You've got file size comparison, that's a real quick check, 32-bit uh, MD5 byte verification and no verification. Obviously, I wouldn't select no verification because that defeats the purpose of having Shotput Pro to begin with. So you definitely want to have some kind of verification. MD5 is by far the most common and I would say the most widely used currently in Hollywood um, and pretty good uh, as far as verifications go. Um, there are instances when MD5 can fail. You could listen to our podcast. We talked to Dan Montgomery about those instances, but they're, they're far and few between. And um, certainly for most people in Hollywood, I think MD5 has been uh, a pretty good working solution. You can cancel the offload if the failure occurs. You can also sound an alarm, which is pretty good. This is especially good if you're setting it to full auto and you're not really uh, looking after the system. It's good for it to stop and actually um, create an alarm sound just so that you know something went wrong. 
right here, um, volume in integrity verification. This ensures that it's actually uh, a video card because you know this thing will actually offload any drive you put in it. So if you stick in a solid state drive that has, let's say, uh, Word documents or something, you're just using it as a solid state drive. This will actually go through it and check that it's actually a video card and that you're really meaning to offload that particular solid state drive. Uh, right here, you can automatically eject the card when it's done. You can automatically format. You can make a sound, and you can rename the card. I believe renaming the card doesn't work for every instance. I think Aria Alexa is not quite there, uh, and there might be a few others. Um, I tend to not rename it, and I tend to not automatically do any of these things, especially not formatting, um, since I, you know, we tend to have a person watching Shotput Pro during the offload. But again, you know, automatically ejecting it might not be a bad thing if you're in again full auto mode. Um, it's a great way to do a thing. It makes a bing sound. Everything went okay. The checksum is there. It plays a sound and then. Um, ejects the cards. This is great, for example, if you're a single person shooter. You're doing a documentary, you have nobody to look out for the offloads. Um, it might not be a bad idea um, to play these in conjunction with each other. And then you have logging. You can automatically save the logs after each offload, warn before unsaved logs are eliminated. Verbose is a good thing. Um, I don't usually set it to minimal. It'll give you the most amount of details, and it's just a text file, so why not have it tell you everything it possibly can? Um, speaking of text file, you can output it as a text, XML, a CSV for Excel, or HTML. I tend to leave it as a text. And then here you can choose basically where you want to save that text file. Do you want it to go with each offloaded drive or do you want to create a common folder? Um, I like the idea of a common folder because basically if you're a DIT and you're offloading all of these cameras, it's great to be able to have one log in one place that you can take with you and put on the master drive that goes away because if somebody asks you, hey, did card three of B camera get offloaded, it's very easy then to go to one place and look at everything you offloaded that day or during the entire shoot for that matter. Um, so this, this selection is actually really, really cool. This allows you to add a card identifier to log after each offload and as well as some notes. Um, these are all preferences which I think are really interesting to explore. This one's kind of interesting. You can send a mail message after each offload completes. This is really um, uh, important in a multicam shoot. So let's say you know, you've got a bunch of cards in there, all of them going back to back to multiple destinations and it's late at night and this is in a studio environment where you can leave the system overnight. Why not? Uh, park it, go to dinner, and have it basically um, send you an email when you have to come back and check uh, to see if everything went okay. So I think these are really cool preferences, something to go for. Like I said, I would look at it right off the bat before you even start anything because it will definitely change how the software behaves. Um, if you look up here, that's basically your preferences, your verification utilities. You can deactivate. Obviously, that's the licensing issue. Begin offload, cancel offload, hide a toolbar. There's very little um, in here, as you can see. Most of the software now that you've set your preferences is going to live in this world right here, um, as well as you're going to be looking at stuff over here. So let's take a look. You can browse. Um, that will allow you to browse for drives and elements to offload. In my case, I'm just refreshing the drive list to show it here. I also have two extra components installed. One is HD View and one is proxy mail. These won't naturally appear uh, unless you've purchased these add-ons. HD View is a great um, viewer player, if you will. What it allows you to do is basically look at your source or your offloads uh, for any kind of file format. So without having to go through various players, sometimes you have to use VLC and sometimes QuickTime Player, um, sometimes uh, MPEG Stream Clip. This will play basically RED files, it'll play Alexa files, it'll play Canon EOS files, It'll play P2 files. So it's a great way to basically just review your source footage or review your offloads. ProxyMail is a separate software. That basically is a dailies creation software. What that allows you to do is, let's say I'm offloading my Alexa footage in ProS 444. I can tell ProxyMail, you know what? Keep an eye on my offload destination. And as you see files come in, make me an H.264 for the web or make me something for my iPhone, or make me a delivery in ProRes 422 instead of 444. So it's a great way to basically build dailies as you're offloading your media, which is kind of cool. Again, but these two elements do not come in your basic run-of-the-mill version of Shotput Pro. You have to buy them. 
Uh, here, you can clear the queue, you can cancel all, and this is the notification to begin. Remember, uh, one of the options was to start automatically when something hits the queue. I set it to manual, so I actually have to click begin to start um, actually doing anything. So let's take a look. So in here, um, I have my file naming conventions, right? So right off the bat, it tells me, okay, consecutive numbering, you can start with one, I have my prefix, my suffix, etc. So what I like to do is obviously in a prefix I usually put the project file name. So I'm going to call this demo. Okay, here we go. Under demo, as I hit the tab key, you notice it already tells me how things are going to be written, how the folder is going to be named. So what I want, what I like to do is always put an underscore. So now if you notice it'll say demos name on my project and this is one but I like to go a little further because I like to basically call it a mag so let's call this mag and then tab and now all of a sudden it says the name of the project is demo this is going to be mag one and keep in mind these numbers are gonna automatically increment so um, I don't have to worry about then making it mag two mag three mag four uh, it'll do that for me. But you notice I have a two camera project. I've got this Alexa stuff and I've got uh, my F3 footage. So why not also create a suffix called Alexa? Now, basically, it'll say if I download this card, it'll be called demo, which is the name of my project, mag1 of the Alexa camera. I could also, if this was a multi-cam shoot, just call this Alexa cam A, Alexa cam B, Alexa cam C, and then separate my offloads by camera mags as well. I could also obviously include the day, the date, anything you want uh, in this area. But what I love about this new feature is this advanced thing, right? I now have an Alexa project, but I also have this F3. It would be great to be able to offload the Alexa and the F3 in separate folders, but then also not have to constantly retype it. Because as the cards are coming to me, I might get one Alexa, one F3, one Alexa, one F3. So here in the advanced folder, I'm now, I'm now can add as many custom names as I want. So for example, I can say, okay, what if I make a second one? Call that also demo mag. And this time in this suffix, I'm going to add F3. So now in my in my demo, I'm going to be able to not only use um, my Alexa stuff, but I'll also be able to use this F3 stuff and basically bounce back and forth uh, between the two. And I can I can add as so if this was if I had red, I can add another one, make it red as well, and then just. All I have to do is click advance and go make active. And whichever is active would populate right over here. So you can switch back and forth back and forth really, really quickly. So I think that's a really, really cool tool, a great addition um, to this bag of tricks. So before we offload anything, so now I've, I've basically prepared it for my Alexa demo mag one. We have to tell it where it's going to go. So here in the offload destinations on the bottom, left hand side I'm gonna start adding destinations right now on my laptop I have no external drives connected but what I did is I created folders just to simulate those drives obviously there'd be no benefit to offloading the same footage to two destination folders on the same drive because if that drive crashed you would lose both of them so for for this demo though I'm gonna say here I'm gonna send one of them to one let's assume this is a drive and then I can simultaneously add a second drive that I'm going to call destination two. So now I'm set up to basically take whatever is in here and uh, call it that and offload it to okay. here. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Alexa drive and throw it on here, um, right on the center of the screen. What you'll notice is I have two queues set up, and these are basically queued to go to each destination. So it's one folder, um, I mean one card, one Alexa card destined to go to two destinations. And if I had set up my queue to begin automatically downloading, I wouldn't even have to hit begin. The minute it's in the queue, it would start offloading. Like I said, I've set it to purely manual so that I have to tell it, go ahead and begin offloading. It's not enough that it's sitting in the queue. I want to give that instruction set. Uh, and if you double click here, it'll tell you exactly what it's set to offload. So here are the shots that are on that particular mag. There's an FCPXML file. It would tell you what the bytes are copied, the checksum, the duration that it took. It gives you a progress bar. 
and all of that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and now I'll tell it, go ahead and begin. And it's now starting the copy process. So essentially what I can see now is that in real time, it's sending basically both cards out. I mean, one card to both destinations simultaneously. And if I want to check that, I can click here now and see what's going on. So this is going to do destination two, which is my second hard drive. And as you can see, it says in process on two files at the same time. That's because of that restriction that I set earlier, remember? Because I'm on a laptop, I don't want to overwhelm it with how many files it does simultaneously. Um, but I can see here that two files are being copied. When they're done, there will be a checksum verification, making sure that everything was correct and you will have a verified next to here. Um, I can close this window and check in on this guy right here. And this you can see is on destination number one. It's the same mag, essentially the same Alexa mag that I'm copying over and it's also in process and you have this um, progress bar on the bottom side of the screen that basically tells you how much time is left over on this copying process. So let me close this window and there you have it. So what I'm going to do now is, since this is not really a test of speed, I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording and pick it up when the offload is complete. Okay, so here we are. Um, the uh, system made a bing sound. I went out, I uh, just got a coffee, I heard it bing, I came back and started this record again. And uh, let's see what happened. Uh, the first thing I see is right here we have completed and completed. Offload complete. Both are just next nice. and right here it says estimated remaining time is idle. So essentially it's copied over to our destination folder. So let me just double check right now what it did. I'm going to double click on here and let me open up this window a little bit so we can take a look at what happened. So here we have all of the files. So I've got about seven takes on this mag. The source, the copied bytes, it gives me a checksum. It tells you how long all of this stuff took and of that it was verified. So Here's the time of completion, verified files, files copied, source. So it gives you all of this stuff. If I do view log, um, it's a little hard to see here, but in yellow, you can basically see shop it offload, it ended at, it gives you a time, total offload. Uh, you can go up here and actually see all of the copying that happened. Basically, um, comparing volumes, it, it shows you its checksum, it gives you its MD5. Um, it basically gives you everything that happened in that log. I can save the log now to somewhere else um, and I can, or I can close this window. So um, basically, and that's the same for both, this is the other destination which is my destination one drive. I could have had three destinations and I would have sent it to all three destinations. So let me close this window and just to make sure, let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like here. So here are my destination drives. If I double click in it, you get to see that basically here are my offload logs, right? And there's that text file that goes with the offload. If I open up my destination number two, it should look exactly the same. And you, as you can see, it called it demo mag one Alexa. And in there is the uh, mag, which is right here, still on my desktop that I haven't ejected of that drive. And then if I go further, here are the takes um, within that drive, all safely backed up and safely logged, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. So basically at this point, um, I've done my Alexa card. All I would do is go over here, go to advanced, make this one active. And if you notice, it's switched over here to my, um, my uh, mag. So what I would do here is basically make sure I'm in consecutive numbering and in my Alexa mag, I'd want to be at two. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, in this case, uh, at one, because I haven't yet incremented anything to do with the F3. And so all I would do here is basically go with demo, mag one of the F3, and off I go. But you can see how easy it is now to not have to retype or anything. You, all you have to do is go advance, make the Alexa active, and now if you notice over here, I'm ready to basically offload mag two of the Alexa. Uh, and then if I make F3 active, I can just, you know, go back and forth between the two. This function is really, really great for both multi-camera. This, like I said, this could be a RED 1, RED 2, RED 3, a RED Cam A, Cam B, Cam C, or in this case, F3 and Alexa. 
Well, that's it for this demo today. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more, don't hesitate to go to www.techmediaplanet.com. Make sure to check out episode 28. We have Dan Montgomery from Imagine Products talking all about Shopit Pro. Thanks a lot.